These people are mustahzi'un, right? And, and it's, it's impermissible for us to even sit with them. You know, a mustahzi is someone who mocks and ridicules the religion, who mocks and ridicules the Prophet Sallallahu We're not even supposed to give them a platform. Don't even just completely ignore them. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, na." what does he say? Wakafa. But the mustahzi'in, Allah says, I will suffice you with respect to the mustahzi'in. In other words, I'll take care of them. Like Abu Jahal and Abu Lahab, right? Um, 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 there's a few, seven or eight of them that were known. All of them, all of them were killed at Badr or they died from disease, you know? So I, I wouldn't engage, I would be very discriminatory as to who you engage with. Even if they're claiming to be Christian and they come to you with smiles and this and that and you know, I, I learned my lessons the hard way. I mean, there was a Coptic Christian guy who was smiling and talking about love, this and that, and he wanted to have a debate with me in 2003. And I said, yeah, we met the night before at a hotel, and we were, he was very cordial and this and that. And, and then the next day at the event, he had three other debaters. So it's like a four against one. And two of these guys were like fluent in Arabic, and they knew like Quran and Hadith and everything. I mean, still one. I mean, come on. <laughs> We took care of business, you know? And I remember the MSA was panicking and they're calling, we're trying to get this local imam to come help you. I said, relax, brother. <laughs> <laughs> the haq will win. <laughs> and then uh, it was just, uh, but it got, it got to a point, because they were losing, it got to a point where this man, who's, who's a, he's a Coptic, um, he's a Coptic priest, he became belligerent and started slandering the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And at that point, we, we can't, you know, you know, lesson learned, right? But you're right, it's the same issues, you know, they're bringing up you know, marriages of the Prophet Sallallahu and they bring up uh, the fact that the Prophet Sallallahu was uh, a military leader and all of this is hypocrisy. I mean, um, I mean, if you look at the, if you look at all of the casualties in every battle of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Abu Hassan al-Nadwi, rahimahullah, he did, he actually did a study on this and he said there's about 1,018 casualties in all of the Ghazawat of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Enemy and Muslim, Mushrikeen and Muslims, 100, 1,018 men in 23 years. All men on the battlefield, right? Musa Alaihi Salam in Exodus 34, he comes down the mountain, he sees his own people worshiping the golden calf, he orders 3,000 men slaughtered on the spot in one night, but he's a prophet. But the Prophet, oh no, he can't be a prophet. This is total hypocrisy. Um, and then, you know, they bring up things like preservation of the Quran and things like that. What they're doing is they're banking on Muslim ignorance of their own text. They know a lot of Muslims, they've never heard of Qiraat, they've never heard of the Ahruf al Sab'a. So they'll bring like a Quran, it says, Maliki Yom Din, Mal with a dagger alif. And another Quran says, Maliki Yom Din, Malik, Malik. Oh, two different Qurans. And then the Muslim, the Du'at that are very young, Right? They're there and they're doing their best. They start going, they, they have this cognitive dissonance. And say, you wrote this Quran. You, <laughs> this is a fabrication. You're calling this a fabrication? Yeah, oh, really? You know. Um, so, a lot of it's sort of, you know, smoke and mirrors. It's the same stuff regurgitated. I don't find any strong arguments coming from the Christian side. Um, you know, uh, but you know, we, we have to be cordial with people. The, these kind of debates that are highly polemical. I mean, I, I debated this other guy. I'm not going to mention his name. Very popular on YouTube, and this was about 16 years ago. You know, um, and it's a pro it was a bad idea, uh, but um, you know, we should have adab with people. We should be discriminatory with people as to who we uh, debate. Um, and at the end of the day, lakum dinakum al right? So we should inform, we should inform with adab. The Quran tells us how to make da'wah, right? Id'u ila sibidi rabbik bil hikmati wal mu'idati al hasana wa jadilhum bil latihi ahsan. So call people to the way of your Lord with hikmah, which means dala'il, according to Imam Zamakhshari and others. He says it means with proofs, scriptural proofs, rational proofs, historical proofs. Wa mu'idati al hasana means good uh, attitude, good comportment, right? With adab. Right? 
So both of these have to have to work, inshallah. Um, but you know, we shouldn't we shouldn't disrespect people's religions. Uh, we shouldn't um, you know mock people. This is not the sunnah. You know, we're we're all guilty of this, doing things like this in the past. Uh, so we make tawbah. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to forgive us because we're be hindering people from the path of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We don't want that to happen. Allah says, "Don't curse their gods, or else they're going to curse Allah." Right? So we can point things out to them, you know, with adab. It's very difficult to do. I don't have the temperament for debate anymore. This is what I've learned. I don't have the temperament because I let my ego get involved, and I, I can't do it. I, I, I would. I thought that when I got older, I would be more patient, but I've just become a crotchety old man. <laughs> I don't want to hear these bad arguments anymore. Uh, you can miss me with all of that now. I don't want to hear it anymore. I've already dealt. I've already dealt with it.